Should I get married to a non-believer? This is a question that most church girls ask themselves. And in today's video, I just want us to chat. I don't want to say it's right or it's wrong. I'm just going to share some of my friend's experiences, my experiences. And out of that, I'm going to leave you to make your own decision. Welcome to my channel. My name is Essendra. people talking about and I need you before I even continue before I continue let me let me uh, ask you to do this if you're that girl who is in church who has been trusting God for a, a, a life partner who has been trusting God for a family and you're there you're looking at you you're, you're looking at time and you're thinking uh, this thing is not happening and what you want to do right now is just uh, just uh, get married to an unbeliever or just get married to just someone who just shows up simply because you're desperate or you think otherwise I need you to do this thing before you make that decision I need you to write a list of why you think why you want to make that decision in the first place and I'm going to share with you some of the things that you're going to put on your list that I know you're going to put on your list the number one thing that you, you, you're about to put on your list is your age. You're like, I'm 30, I am 30 what, I am 40, I am what. Now, I don't see, I don't know of anywhere that is written or anyone that has said that this is the age limit for you to get married. What you're going through is just that you think simply because your grandmother got married at 20, your mother got married at 20 something, your sister got married at what, and you think that you also follow in that lineage, you should get married at a certain age and do have kids at a certain age. Let me tell you something. Age has, that there is nowhere written that by certain and certain time you should get married. Those are society, that is our society that has, Put that thing in our mind to think that by age na fakwa ni molewa, by age na fakwa na mtoi, all those things. But there's nowhere, akuna, even God himself never said by the age of such and such time you should get married or you should marry. Nobody put that time. So forget about age. You might be 30, you might be 40, you might be 50, you might be whatever age you are at. As long as tell God to preserve you, tell God to keep you, tell God we, God is going to pay back all those times that you think you wasted, that you think uh, waiting on him was in vain. So I need you to get that thing out of your mind and stop thinking that this, uh, this is, I'm getting late to get married because this is the age I'm at or this is the age that my everybody else in my life got married at and I'm the only one, my, even my small sister got married at 20 something, I am what? Forget about it. Nobody has put an age limit for marriage. You can get married at 40. You can get married at whatever age that God has purposed for you to get married. So if you're thinking of age, I urge you just stop thinking about age. Stop. That is just a number. You're even not sure whether that is your age. So <laughs> stop thinking about age. Don't let age make you feel like I'm late to do this. I'm late to do that. No, whatever age you're at. Whatever timing that God has for you to start a family is the right timing. The other thing I know you're going to light is my biological clock. Now, here's what I think I need you to do. You don't trust God to give you a husband, but you trust the same God to give you a child. This is the, this is the thing that I don't understand. You, God is the one who gives husbands. The same God is the one who gives children. Now, what makes you think he will deny you a partner and give you a child? Or what makes you think he'll deny you? You know, there are people who get married even at, the, at 20 and they stay for so many years without children. What you see about those people and they get children when they are around 40 or 30 or something. And you are here thinking, my biological clock, my biological clock. That is science. Let me tell you something. If you can trust God, you can be patient and hold on for God to give you a husband. He is the same God that is going to give you children. He knows your biological clock. He knows all those things. And I keep saying this, 
God comes late when he wants to come big. You know, if Sarah in the Bible had a child at 20 or at 30, it wouldn't be a big deal because everybody is like, hmm, what else are you supposed to do after getting married? You're supposed to have children. What, what else are you supposed to do after? But it was a big deal for the, the fact that she got a child at 80. That must have been God. That is, that is why you feel like, wow, that is it. And when you think of all those things, when you think about all those things, it is not about your biological clock. It is not about all those other things. If you keep trusting God, wait for the right person. When the God gives you the right person, imagine there are some things that I'm going to share. You will find people struggling with that and you're not going to experience or you're not ever going to be a part of. Do you understand? So stop thinking about your biological clock. Stop thinking about what children and all those things. You can get married at 20 and not have children until your late 30s. Because God is the one who gives husbands and the same God is the same God that gives you gives children so stop trusting you don't trust him to give you a man but you want to trust him to give you children that is leaning on your own understanding because you're like nikipata bonani automatically nipata watoto who said that who said that husband is equals children you can have a husband and without children and maybe that man that you went for will leave you because you never had children and you're going to be left heartbroken so stop rushing because of something that even it's not in the Bible. I keep saying, if it's not in the Bible, it's a lie. So anything to do with biological clock, that shouldn't bother you. If, as long as you keep trusting God, as long as you stay patient. I said this and I'm going to repeat. God comes big. When God comes late when he wants to come big. The third thing I know is going to be on your list is family and society pressure. Now, this is another thing that I keep telling people. The same people who are giving you pressure to get married and you get married wrongly are the same people who are going to call you a bad woman or a person who cannot maintain a good home when that thing doesn't work society is good but stop basing your life or start stop uh, 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 putting your life based on what the society is going to say or what they say think you should they think you should live your life because let me tell you Utenda tu tolewa juu, ufamilia wanakupa pressure mkienda family meeting, mm, we have not seen you come with anybody, we have not seen anything. Watakupa hizo pressure zote. But you hurry to get married simply because your family and the society are pushing you, get married to the wrong person. Things don't work out. And the same same people, the same same people, and it hurts so bad. When the same family members are the ones who are going against you, who are talking bad things about you, how you couldn't keep a home, how you couldn't do all those things, and yet they're the same people who gave you pressure to do the to make the wrong decision. So tell them not to ask you that question. When the right person comes, he's going to come. So what are this? And until then, you should be okay with you yourself being the way you are, being single, being all those things. So. Don't let that bother you. Sju society, Sju family, don't let that bother you. Now, let me give you a, a let me give you some tips, some uh, some tips on the things that the challenges that arise when you make that decision to marry an unbeliever or to just get married because of biological clock, your age, your family, your society pressure. Let me give you some of the things that. The, uh, that that are the challenges that you might face number one these things there are things you need to do before you get married if you're getting ma married to a believer which an unbeliever will not understand let me tell you something there are these things people are calling body counts spiritually they are called soul ties and the bible says when two come together they become one so how many husbands do you have as before you get married because the moment you become one that means that is your husband so you need to is almost a body count maybe you had four you had five you had what and the other person you're getting married to have what all those things before you get married as believers you need to go to the altar and cancel all those things if you haven't done this if you never did this please do so because you need to disconnect yourself with any other person 
before you get connected to this one person that you're going to get married to. I hope I'm making sense. I hope I'm I'm making a problem. Any nasema. Before you go to the altar, before you say I do, before you start that family, you need to disconnect yourself with anybody else that you've ever slept with. Anybody else that you had a connection with, you need to disconnect yourself with those people. Because if you don't do so, you're going to carry those things into that relationship. And best believe me, it's not going to be a good feeling. It's not going to work. So if you get married to her, you, you rush to get in a relationship with an unbeliever. They don't understand these things. They don't understand the power of having, of disconnecting yourself from those soul ties. So that is going to be one challenge that both of you are going to face. Because wewe utafanya hizo vitu. Lakini yeye hatafanya hizo vitu. Because he doesn't believe in those things. It is you who believes in those things. And it's so hard for you to convince a man. Ati unafaa kufanya hivi na hivi. Yako zile za oh excuse me cut the crap. So that is one thing that you should, you should understand. That this person is not going to understand anything to do with soul ties. Yeah, yako to see when he's sleeping with someone is a big deal. That is what may be the thing. But you, you understand that we need to disconnect ourselves with these things that we did in the past so that we can have a new beginning and open a new chapter as a married couple. The second thing you need to do, the second thing that is going to be a challenge is spiritual covering. Let me tell you something. I have a friend of mine who called me with the were expectant and they were like, I see you lize, mtu akiwa tu na boli na feeling hata una una sikia kuomba. It is expected because your body has changed. You don't there are sometimes you don't feel like waking up. There are sometimes you feel like waking up. There are all those things you understand. You need a person who can stand in the gap while you are going through that situation. Like for example, when you when you in that when you in that space where you, you, cause si kila siku uta feel, uta amka na sexa kwa mbati, hey, ni amka nga kila siku mimi na kwa na sexa kwa. There are times you don't even feel like praying. There are some times you feel like you don't even, you don't even feel like seeing the grace. Live alone a prayer. You don't even feel like you can finish the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are those times that you feel so. So you need a person to stand in the gap at that particular moment. Because the Bible says that we pray without ceasing. Because the devil is all over. Every time looking for someone to devour so you need to be very alert you need to be very active when it comes to prayer and when one partner is standing in the gap be less assured you're safe but when both of you like you are the prayer partner are you the prayer you're the you you you're the person that prays in that house and you're in that situation so you've left room for the devil to attack you've left room for things to just not work out simply because you are not in the position to do that so you need a person to stand in the gap well when you yourself are not in a position to do so so that is another challenge that you might that you might uh, you might face the other thing that might you might face is misunderstanding when it comes to giving service and fasting now when you are let's say for instance you as a lady a believer you go to church you understand about giving you understand about tithing you understand about service and you are you decide to get connected to an unbeliever who doesn't understand all these things and you know even believers there are some believers who struggle when it comes to tithing they have never come to an understanding or a realization of what tithing really is and it has never made sense to them but there are people who really understand no i'm talking to a person who really understands you understand the meaning of uh, tithing and all those things and you connect yourself with a person who even is against tithing and you won't expect your finances to work so you're making this amount of money he's making this amount of money you need to tithe how are you going to go about that this person will never understand why you give they'll think maybe you're bribing your pastor or you're just giving money anyhow just without carelessly but you because you have a revelation and you know what it means to give it's not hard for you to do it if you're with a person who you if you in the same you understand both you both of you understand it's so easy for you to do that but if you're in a situation where this other person doesn't understand i'm sure there's gonna be a problem another thing is service you know when you serve in church you expected to be in church sometimes of the week maybe maybe you're supposed to be left on sunday after service then this person does not understand they think that you are too much church you're too much of a church girl you don't even have time for anything else so 
if a person does not understand that serving serving God is important, you're going to have a you're going to have challenges. And the last thing is fasting. When you're fasting, we all know that you're not supposed to be intimate when you're, when you're, when you're fasting. Now I want you to explain to your person that we cannot be intimate because I'm fasting. They don't understand what you're talking about. You get now to answer to connect. I told you I'm going to give you some points and then I'm going to leave you to make your own decision. So that those are some of the things that are going to bring conflicts, are going to make you rub shoulders every now and then. And uh, there are some people who do it and it works. And sometimes it doesn't work. And uh, I don't know, but let me... Okay, the difference is, the difference between you are not uh, married and you're trying to make a decision to get married to an unbeliever. That one I'm not advice. But if you got married and along the way one of you decided to give their life to Christ, that is okay. I cannot, you cannot leave your husband because you got born again. Mm -mm. That is not the case. But if you haven't, please don't. There are so many dis uh, disadvantages than advantages. What you think you're running to get, uh, it's not worth it. You are going to be in so much conflict with this other person. And the worst thing is, if this person has not been raised in church, you know there are people who are not born again believers but they've been raised in church so when you tell them about service they understand when you tell them about giving they know there's something like giving because they used to go to church with offerings and all those things when you tell them about fasting they understand but they just they just not practice it those are different things but if you get if you you happen to meet a person who doesn't understand all these things then you're gonna have a problem so i'll urge you to wait be patient Everything good comes from God and everything he has every if you have a desire to serve a family if you have a desire to ever get married God knows your desire and God is going to fulfill your desires in the right time so I hope this video has been helpful I'm not telling you to or not to but based on that video I need you to make the right decision and I need you to just sit and ask yourself those questions and you'll know whether it's worth it or not worth it. Thank you for watching my video and until next week, bye bye.